Well, all I did was close the bonnet. I, don't, I mean, hello everyone. Hope you're all well. So, end of the last video, I said that I was going to auction to buy a little Mercedes A Class. So, it was a 12 plate A Class, which would be the last of the bulbous shaped A Classes before they went to the new shape like they are now. It was a petrol automatic. They're good little cars, them A Classes. Um, they don't really go wrong, they're not a bit slightly higher up, so they appeal to quite a few. And I've got a lot of customers for them. And when they come up with low miles, most of the time I try and buy them if I can. This one came up, a particular auction place, they didn't they didn't get on a condition report in time. It had no condition report, no mechanical report, no nothing. And in reality, most of the time I really struggle to buy online anyway, because I'm a fussy idiot and I need to look around the car before I buy it. So that was a plan to go to auction. I had a customer for that car, so I to plan to go there, went with my old man to buy it, and it didn't really go according to plan. Let's go check it out. And there she is. I'll tell you what, we'll go for a drive in, we'll go for a drive in this in a moment. We'll completely forget about the A-Class and everything what happened. I'll say a bit more about that when we're driving. It's probably easier to say whilst we're driving along. So what we've actually ended up doing is I bought a 2006 Ford Focus. This is a two litre titanium, done 99, fed, almost turned 100,000 miles, and I never planned on buying it. And this, uh, you know, it's, it can happen. <laughs> it can happen when you go to auction. So what we're actually gonna end up doing is we're gonna do a trade to retail on this Ford Focus. It is a bit poorly. I'll tell you what, we'll have a quick look around it. It's, uh, Let's just let's just have a very quick look around it first. So we'll go corner to corner. I mean, obviously you can already tell the so because this is a titanium, that normal rim is usually diamond cut. They corrode straight away. Um, it's got some rather incredible looking tires, which a Satula uh, Satula S Race. Never even heard of what they are. However, it's got about six mil tread on it. So yeah, it's filthy dirty. It has got a rather incredible looking scratch down the whole side of it um, actually got a good efficient grip on the back probably about three and a half mil of tread left yeah it's got another mark on the quarter panel there I don't know what's going on with the wind and the rubber there um, yeah it's a three door as well which probably makes it even less appealing five door might not have been too bad um, has got rear parking sensors on it because it's a titanium probably got auto headlights as well another nice it's not it's got a few it's got a few dents down the side um but it's all right you know it's i, th I think someone will quite like this car i think it'll have a home somewhere so we'll take it for a quick drive rear brakes are a bit grubby but pads are all right on there Front brakes are actually pretty much new. Oh blimey, it's got a completely different tyre on that side. Ayo Telly, yep. Never heard of one of them either. Um, it's got a good year on the back. So yeah, that's a bit of an overview of what I ended up buying. Can have a quick look inside. So inside is, you actually get half level with a titanium on this. So a 2006 car, so there's a couple of positives in here. It's got auto headlights. It's got a parrot aftermarket head Bluetooth phone kit in it, which is all right. It's actually got climate control. It's got CD player. Um, what else positive? Can I? It's got a heated front screen, which is amazing in the fog, in the frost. Let's be honest. It's got some very questionable stains on the seats. Um, it's all right though. Could have a look under the bonnet. I don't want to break the Ford badge off. So it's coming away there. There you go. Right, so just having a quick look under here. Coolant's actually on a good level and actually a good colour. They come factory with that colour coolant. So either it's never been changed and it's still really clean or it has had a coolant change in its life. We'll have a quick look at the all important oil. Promise just over the minimum could do with a bit of that, but just on a quick look, all the important stuff seems to be okay. 
Well, all I did was close the bonnet. I, don't, I mean, I don't even know how that happened. Uh, let's go for a drive in it. Then we'll have another bit more of a chat there. Right, safety first. Push your fires up, good. So, so we'll we'll just go for a quick drive. I'll just say about I'll just say about the A class and the whole sort of experience initially because I didn't record it, um, and I do mean to. If if you guys would like to see, um, I mean I don't even know if you're allowed to to record a bit of auction action in the halls and stuff. I don't know. It's, I suppose you've got two choices. You've got to either go there, do it, and get told off, or ask permission and potentially never do it. Um, but if you guys would like to see a bit of auction action, then then comment below. Let me know. And, uh, and, uh, and I'll take you along. You can come and have a look around at the cars and in the sort of comfort of your living room or wherever you're watching it instead of freezing your butt off at auction like what we do. As far as the A-Class goes, when you're buying cars online at an auction, there's sort of two things that you've got to have. You've either got to have real deep pockets. So if you buy a lemon or something, then it doesn't matter because you'll just finance your way out of it or keep spending money on it until whatever or you've got to have real large testicles i ain't got either of them things so and not to mention the fact that i'm an absolute nightmare and i'm real fussy and i've got to see every car that i buy so i always go along the problem is my business is so small and i'm so fussy that most of the time i end up with a list of cars to buy which is like one or two or i mean it's uh, yeah I'm, i could get up to six but by the time i've got there that six has turned into two very quick or maybe even one very quickly so then i'm down to i'm either buying that car or i'm going em home empty-handed or you end up buying something else that's what happened with this i got there and within anyone anyone that has gone to look at a car whether it's private or at a dealer that knows what what they're looking for you know full well within about 30 seconds whether you're going to buy it or not and this a class was exactly that i got there and it was a horrible car straight away it was it was a low mile car it was i can't say too much about it because i don't want to make it so obvious because some someone out there bought that car online for a lot of money way over what the book price for it was and it was a horrible car straight away i got there the rear quarter had been painted, although only, only half of it had been painted in a completely different shade to what it was. It was all lumpy and that was full of bits in the paint. That was horrible straight away. Um, offside rear door had been painted. That was before I even got round to the front end of the car. The whole front end of the car was out of alignment. The bonnet on one side was, the bonnet was hanging over the top of the wing by about a centimetre. The other side somehow was out as well the other way which completely defies all the laws of physics don't really understand how that's before you got to the fact that it had no service history with it the inside of it absolutely stunk the smoke there was the whole left hand side had been painted it was a horrible horrible car and no matter how much money you put into that car it was never going to be a nice car so what someone has had to do not only have they spent way over what that car is ever going to be worth someone is going to buy that car for even more money and they're not going to have a nice car no matter what someone does to it and, and i couldn't do that to someone i'd rather just not buy the car in the first place so that's exactly what i did the problem is that left me in a dilemma where i hadn't looked at any other cars properly because i like to look at everything before i buy one mot history you know ownership blah 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 all of that before i even start looking around a car i didn't really have time but i tried but i couldn't really find anything else that i wanted so then i was having a chat with my old man and i was like uh, i don't really want to go home empty-handed so i went and had a quick look at the tail end of the auction and i found this car but these focuses are actually really good cars it just this shape focus sort of 2000 and so they went from the older shape in 2005, tail end 2005, 2006 they got. So this is one of the first of this shape. They're good cars. They're really good cars. They drive really nice. They're fairly reliable. They So the 1.6 petrol, this is a 2 litre petrol. The 1.6 petrol is cam belt driven. 
But the 1.8 and the 2 litre is a Duratec HE engine, which is cam chain driven. So straight away, you don't really need to worry about the fact that you've got to go and spend 300 quid on a belt because you haven't got any history of when the cam belt was changed. As far as driving goes, they drive really well. The steering's really good on them. The gearbox is lovely and precise and tight. They're not, see everyone sort of compares one of a Ford Focus to like a Vauxhall Astra because they're arguably the same sort of price and the same sort of category of car. You cannot compare a Ford Focus to an Astra. They are not even in the same sort of ballpark as far as my opinion goes of a car. Ford Focuses are so much better in every way. They look better, they drive better, they're more reliable. They're just a nice car and they do sell well. So I had a quick look around it. Yeah, right, it's three door, that goes against it straight away. But I thought there might be some sort of, not a 17 year old, because it's a two litre, so, but I thought there might be some sort of 18, 19, 20 year old that wants his second car or hers, and they just want something with a bit of go in it. Don't mind the fact that it's got, it's a three door, because they haven't had any kids yet or whatever, you know. I thought there would be a home for this car. Um, it's a four owner car, service history with it is all right. It's got enough five, six stamps in the service book. It's got enough to show that it's had maintenance on the car. Last MOT um, had an issue with a wheel bearing and front brakes, which the wheel bearing has obviously been done. Front brakes have obviously been done. It drives really nicely. Steering wheel is perfectly stra straight. The biggest problem with these focuses are they need an extra gear. Now I'm going 70 mile an hour exactly now and it is literally doing 3,000 revs and it just sounds like it needs another gear. But that's the only bad thing I'd say about these really. The seating position is real nice. There's plenty of room in the back. They're quite hot. You could happily drive a long distance in this car and it wouldn't be a problem at all. One problem with this particular one is I noticed when I was driving home, it doesn't get to operate in temperature. It stays at about 60 degrees. If you put the heaters on, it goes down even more. So it's obviously got a dodgy thermostat in it. The thermostat is obviously stuck open, which I will have to do because pretty much means that it's constantly running around about 60 degrees. So the revs will constantly stay up because it's still, it will still think that it's on sort of cold start. It will use a load more fuel than it will potentially. I'll, I'll do the thermostat and we'll, we'll get that sorted out. But as far as the general condition of the car, it's all right. It will end up looking like quite a nice car, but it's going to be a, very much a budget trade to retail journey, this one, because there just isn't margins in these cars, the sort of slightly cheaper ones, to be able to blow your brains out and do everything on them. You can't go and spend £300 on a wheel refurb because you'll end up doing the thing for nothing. So we will get it. It sort of helps when you're doing everything yourself to a point. You can keep your costs down, but it takes forever. It'll still have a new service and MOT on it ready for the next owner. But hopefully, other than the obvious things, all the brakes are all right. The engine, the engine's perfect, other than the thermostat. But it's got no oil leaks. It's bone dry underneath. It drives really nice. The brakes don't judder. Steering doesn't judder. It's got no wheel balance problems. It's a, uh, it's a, it's quite a nice car. So what we'll do we'll end up, obviously the first thing we need to do is start giving this thing a clean, take everything off the paintwork and see exactly what we're working with. Um, it's never gonna be a brand new car, but it shouldn't be a very expensive car either. You know, it's, I mean, what's it gonna be? Two and a half grand? What can you buy for two and a half grand these days? Very little, unfortunately, ever since the pandemic hit, what sort of two years ago, what would have been a thousand pound car is now a two and a half or a three grand car. It's quite fast being a two litre petrol. They're not that bad on fuel. I think this is 145 horsepower, something like that. You know, it's not gonna be many rice puddings that are gonna be worried about getting their skin ripped off. It, it goes nicely. It's got a lot more grunt than what the 1.6 has, although that little 1.6 is good. They're just good cars. So put it this way. There might be a lot of people out there that like Astras and things like that. If this was an Astra, I wouldn't have bought it. But I sort of knew that the fundamentals of these Focus is a good car. So I sort of hoped that it would be all right. It got me home fine. I mean, I was a bit cold because the heating doesn't really work. But other than that, I'm actually quite happy with this car. Let's get back and start giving it a bit of a clean. Well, I'm scared. 
Oh! They work! Oh dear. Well, here it is. Got the jet wash out. So I'll tell you what, this is gonna it's gonna take a while this car. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'll put some time lapse on, see how she comes up. Now clean. I'll tell you what I've got. To, I've got to quickly look at these wheels, and the reason I say that is that I've had an idea about what to do with them. It's a shame because Simon could make an amazing job of these wheels. They'd look brand new, but there's just not enough margin in the car to to do it. So I've had an idea. I'm just a bit, a bit embarrassed to put it on the internet. It's not the most professional of things to do. I wonder if. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna show how rough it is. Oh, so rough. So, I'm gonna quickly. So, because it's such a flat surface, it's so easy just to do this. That I've... just let me quickly rub that down. Perfectly smooth. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to rub all these down. I'm going to make them smooth like I just have done. I'm not going to record it because it will be boring. Um, then we'll come back and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. It's raining. I'm going to have to quickly get it in here. I have to do this in the garage. So I was about to show you guys what I was going to do to the wheel before I did it. But then I heard myself saying what I was going to do and I thought, good Lord, I'm going to sound like the biggest cowboy ever. So I thought what I'd do, I'd try it on one wheel first, see what it looked like, then show you guys what, because I actually think it's come out quite well and it's taken me about 25 minutes to do it. So there's the wheel. That one's done. That one, as you can see, is obviously very much not done. And I think it looks all right. I mean, I'm quite pleased with it. So I'm gonna show you what I did. But I'm just gonna show you uh, under <laughs> And that's it. That's what I've done. I have painted after rubbing it down you saw me rubbing it down i've painted the outer rim with silver smooth finish hammerite with one of my actually two of my daughter's little artist brushes i've just brushed it on and i actually think it looks really good i mean it hasn't cost me any money apart from a used hammerite tin which is definitely fairly old and fairly used and that's it i mean it's taken me 25 minutes if i go around and do them all yeah, it's a little bit of time, but I mean, I think that looks really good. Hammerite's pretty good, you know. It's not gonna, uh, it's not gonna come off with a jet wash. It should clean up again, all right. So I'm just gonna do all, all four of them. I mean, let me know, let me know what you think about that. It's yeah, it's a bit yeehawy. It's a bit like you're gonna leave your horse outside. I, I get that, but it looks, it looks better, and the margins just aren't in for me to pay to refurb them. So I'm gonna do it to the rest of them. <laughs> Here we are. 
wheels are all done that one's done that one's done that one's done and that one's done now i need to start mopping this car really so many marks on this car it looks all right from a distance but look at the i mean look at the state of it the problem is i can't concentrate on anything else now until i see if this scratch comes out because this scratch is probably the worst mark on the car and i need to know i mean it's, it should come out being flat it doesn't really help with the white reflection does it oh it's better in that reflection of that table let me move that table across here a minute let's mop let's give this a mop see if it comes out i'm gonna flat this back i'm gonna speed this little bit up because i got a little bit bored watching it back when i was editing it i think the reality of that coming all the way out without me melting through that is fairly minimal but we will improve it quite a lot so that's, that's going to take a while so i'll tell you what let's uh let's stick it on some time lapse and see how i get on It's a bit swirly now, but you can hear that one. I don't know. Maybe I'll have another go tomorrow, but for now, I'm going to get on to another bit around the other side. So we might end up just having to go over the top of them, but all these door... Oh dear. That's not as deep, that scratch, but it's still pretty bad. Let's see how that one comes out. Here I am again with my little D-nib block. I didn't bother wet flat in that scratch because it just didn't look deep enough for me to think that i needed to so i just done the little imperfections on it and then went over the top with my mop and a fairly heavy compound to try and get the marks out that'll be 3m fast cut plus that i'm using there with a matching green pad i would not be using that compound if this was a japanese car honda civic something like that the paint just isn't thick enough on them cars but on the ford it was okay it will create some swells though see that's actually ended up really nice touched up the little ones on the door molding but other than some serious swells that i've just put in that that looks really nice that door problem is that looks so nice that i'm gonna have to do the whole car now if i got a light on that that would look atrocious let me see if i can oh look at them but now i've got to end up going over my mop marks with a lesser compound to get the swells that i've put in but at least it's taken all the big scratches out it's gonna look nice when this is done this car you know what if there's anyone out there watching this thinking that they'd like a bit of a bit of mop action thinking about buying their own mop doing a bit of mopping on their own car or whatever you should definitely do it if you're sitting there thinking you'd like to learn how to use a mop you know i'm sure there's classes out there but i'm all i'm all self-taught the difference that a mop can make i mean that's that fairly unsightly mark from the near side rear corner of this focus and Look at the difference that makes. I mean, to be fair, that, that scratch wasn't that bad. But you wouldn't have got it out just with hand polish. And a dual action polisher probably would have done. But I always tell people to just go straight for a rotary just because they're so much better. But look at that. Look at the difference. Just touch that a little bit up there. That looks mega. And there we go. I think as far as the outside of that, I think that's pretty much done. I've now done, I've done a two and a half stage on that. <laughs> I did the real heavy cut. I've just done a medium cut mixed with a light cut to see. And it's taken all the swells out, which is cool. It's all a bit dusty. What do you think? Shiny, nice wheels. Is it, whatever happens, I've got to get on because I've spent too much time on it now. I've got, so I haven't even touched the interior yet, all the thermostat, so whilst we're under here let's have a look the under the seat feature 
see what we've got in this one. My hand, nothing there. Nothing. Oh. Bit of gum, maybe. <laughs> 7p. No, no, 7p, that's all right, that's better than nothing. How annoying is that, look? You can see that there's obviously been a set of mats there. The car didn't come with rear mats, it came with front ones, nice rubber ones. It obviously had the back ones and they've lost them. That's annoying, because I love a set of mats. I bet they're, the same. Oh, they're exactly the same as well, you can tell by... <laughs> I'll do, we'll do a little bit of time lapse and then that's it, it's going to take too long, I've spent too long on this video already so we'll quickly do that and then we'll and then we'll be <laughs> forward badge got to fix that too does that look now admittedly I've still got to put the forward badge back on but under the bonnet compared to what it looked like before that looks amazing doesn't it so let's put on that down there so I don't, so I don't dent the door there you go so the seats are still drying but I've dressed all the doors dressed all the dash put the mats back in done it all in the back done the windows that looks quite dry in there as well because there was a bit of a stain on the seat there but this car's actually turned out to be like quite a nice looking car inside and out forward badges down there got to put that back on the not sure about the green rag so i'll just do the forward badge then i'll be ready to take some uh, take some pictures so after phoning up john gross my local ford main dealer finding out that the car is so old they don't even make a thermostat for it anymore and then phoning up the factors place that I would normally use and they can't get one either I had to go on to which actually looks pretty good from eBay it says that it's for the two litre petrol so uh, hopefully let's see so the other one is down there as you can see them two pipes coming off it but i don't fancy taking off all of the it looks like you have to take loads of stuff off to get to it alternator tensioner put it this do you know what i'm going to take this headlight out see if you can get to it a bit easier yeah so the headlight's out you can just see one of the eight mils so that you can see one of the eight mils holding it in top left hand corner that's an eight mil on the thermostat housing so i'll tell you what i think we'll do a bit of time lapse here because i'm gonna have to faff around for a bit drain the coolant jack it up take some pipes off and see if i can get to them three bolts let's do that Yeah. 
this car has done just shy, a couple of hundred miles shy of a hundred thousand miles. Look how dry it is. It's not a single leak, no staining, no nothing. It's almost too dry. It's like corroded aluminium dry. It's a good car, this is. So what I'm trying to find is, got to come under here. Oh, excuse me, hand. Get my torch out. The drain bung on the red. Oh, there it is. Hello. Let's put that there. See if you can see. Hope you can see. Oh, there's stuff dripping in my hair. So what I've done, because of the because the drain bung is there, it's gonna fill up that undertow with comments. So what I've done, have you ever seen a more perfect drain bowl than that? It's my daughter's dolly bath. She won't mind. So I've made a I made a milk bottle funnel to wedge under there. So in a perfect world when I undo this drain bun, instead of the coolant going everywhere, it's going to go down my amazing funnel. Oh, I can't get my arm. Oh, if only to have a ramp. Go again, go again. Oh, here it comes. It's like the Red Niagara Falls. What an amazing colour, look at that. It's like brand new. Could be brand new. I don't know when it was last changed. No mess. Just a plastic milk bottle. Perfect. How's my bowl looking? Oh! It's getting a bit close. I managed to get to that one there. That one. So that's cracked off. But as for the other two on the other side, can't even see them. Can't get the hose pipe clips off because the hose pipe clips are too big and too powerful and I can't get my hand in there to get any leverage so tell you what I'll do I'm gonna have a little faff around and then I think I'll come back once this is off and voila there it goes do you know what I've them little three bolts there I've genuinely taken gearboxes out that were less hassle than this thermostat yeah and I made a load of mess because when the thermostat came away coolant went everywhere but the new one is now on, although I've tried, got to try and get it in that hole. We're in, people. Shiny new thermostat housing. Look at that. Look. Clipped on. Bolts are done up, even the one underneath. Now I've just got to put it all back together. Put the light in, put the antifreeze in, start it up. And hope we've got no leaks. Mega. Here I am, look, rushing around, putting the coolant in it just before I start it up. Well, she's running up. Water pump's going around. Can't see any leaks at the moment. No leaks underneath. Got me bits of wood where I held my phone on. <laughs> see if we can get you guys underneath. Make sure there's no leaks. Zoom in up here a little bit. No leaks. Oh. Oh. Wow. Well, let's get it all back together. Get the headlight back in. Job done. Well, there she is, in all her polished glory. Man, I think that's a good looking car now. Four badges on. <laughs> it's all shiny. Interior's all done. So I'm still drying a little bit. See a bit of a patch there and a bit of a patch on the other side, but it is drying, but it's all clean. Dash is all done. Back's all done. This is now a nice car. All the swells are out. Nice. Whoops. That seat's drying. Seats are definitely wet because now I've got a wet bum from moving it. 
let's get some pictures of it get it up for sale so put the focus up for sale um, on my auto trader portal it was for sale for about five days um, had a guy phone me up he needed a cheap car but he didn't want any old car he wanted a car that still looked nice he needed it quickly and it was ready to go that car he came along really liked it was well chuffed that it had a hands-free phone kit in it and uh and he bought it. I mean, I was lucky with that car. It was a cheap car, didn't have a big margin in it, only needed the thermostat and a little bit of prep and an oil filter and I'd done an MOT. So, but I mean, if I'd have picked it up from auction and it needed a new gearbox or something like that, then I'd have done a lot of work for nothing. But it went all right, it, it was a good car. So uh, I think the next video is gonna be another little update about the new site. Um, I'm catching up, I'm catching up with my videos, I'm getting there. Um, Thanks for bearing with me. Yeah, hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up button if, if you like what you're seeing. And if you don't, tell me and, uh, and I'll change it. But um, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.